going live on YouTube every night. I go live on YouTube. It's usually between 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join. You hit the subscribe button. Then you hit that little bell symbol. And you can come in the live chat. You can add a comment. I have dialogue. I read each and every comment. But, but what I do is each live feed, I pick a specific structured topic, something in life I've been through, I'm going through, or I want to talk about. Um, you know, what's my channel about? Look, my channel is about inspiration. Uh, based on the different things I've experienced in life, whether it's losing 200 pounds, whether it's uh, downsizing, selling my house, living out of my car. Does it mean everyone has to lose 200 pounds? Does it mean everyone has to live? No. But it does mean that I can share certain things with my life. You could put your own twist on them and you can get your energy and your inspiration levels up to become yourself and to not be, you know, taken to a dark place where where misery loves company, where other people keep you in a box, where you keep yourself in a box. Uh, that being said, Liz, I'm live checking your yo. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone had a good day. Love and respect to you, Liz. All right, I want to get right into the structured topic, and then um, we'll get back into the live chats. Bree and I see you. Let's get it. Recently cut off a fake friend, he says, and going through a void phase. The video seems promising. Yeah, so what I want to talk about tonight is change your phone number, change your life. Your life does not change when you cut friends off. Your life does not change when you eliminate unhealthy family members. Your life doesn't change when you block people. Your life only changes when you completely change your phone number and don't give it to anyone you want part of your new life. You don't put a social media post and say, I'm changing my phone number. If anybody new wants it, inbox me. You don't do any of that shit. You don't stay in touch with certain people. Uh, if you're just occasional friends, change your phone number and don't give it to anybody. Only people that you deem absolutely necessary to be in your life. Absolutely. Fuck the freak friendships. Forget the person that doesn't like you as much as you like them. Forget the person who doesn't have similar goals and interests. What you have to do, and I've done it in my life. This is based off my experience. I did it first when I did it with my father. Okay. Because I had gotten to a disagreement with him when I was a grown adult. Um, I didn't always vibe with him, but I tried to establish a relationship because I, he did do some great things for me and I try to respect him. But he basically just got to the point in my adult childhood that he couldn't accept certain decisions I was making. And it to voicemail. Why? Because when you listen to that unhealthy stuff, that doesn't encourage you. It doesn't inspire you. It brings you backwards. When you see an unhealthy text, it doesn't inspire you. Sprint allows you to change your phone number up to three times within 30 days at no cost. The best thing you can do is completely change your phone number and give it to no one other than you deem absolutely necessary to be in your life. Family member, lover, friend, whoever. Don't be one of these people who's scared to change their number because you have business associates, because you have this person knows it, this person that. Those type of people don't know how to change. Those type of people don't have a mindset of adaptation. I know some people that are miserable where they're living, but they won't move because the mental burden of changing their address on their license is too overwhelming. So they stay in a house, in a living situation that isn't healthy for them simply because they don't have it in them to deal with the uh, frustration of changing their driver's license to a new mailing address. These are the same people that keep unhealthy relationship, they keep the phone number. And they're gonna get don't give your if you even think you have a friend that will give your phone number out, don't even fucking give it to them. Excuse my language. You change your number and you don't give it to anybody. You're willing to go and call your business associate, send a mass email out and change your phone number. If you don't have the mental capacity to change your phone number, you don't have the mental capacity to change. You might as well sign up for a lifetime of therapy. You might as well sign up for a lifetime of self-medication. You might as well sign up for a lifetime of going on a merry-go-round and not going forward. You have to decide in life, how serious are you? Some people aren't serious. Some people play games with their own life 
at their own peril. Log on to Verizon, log on to Sprint, log on to AT&T, log on to T-Mobile, and do whatever it takes to change your phone number completely tonight and give it to no one. And you think about that for five, at least five to seven days. You think about that before you give your phone number to anybody. Let people call you and don't know where you are. The only people that should know your number immediately is a business associates. For your job, maybe, maybe one or two loved ones, maybe. Let them think you're missing. You'd be better off in life because you've been missing for the last 20, 30 years of your life. You've been missing in action and you got to get your life together. It's the same mindset with food. You don't get your life together when you got a bag of cheese duels stuffed underneath the cupboard. Talking about you bought it, you know, for this part. You, know, you don't change your life when you have ice cream in the back of the freezer because you know eventually when nine o'clock at night comes, when you're watching my replay, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna sneak back into that cupboard. In life, when you're really, you, when you're ready to lose weight, you throw out every unhealthy thing in that house and you get your life together. When you're ready to change your life. You're ready to change your relationships. You change your number. You don't give it to anyone. Everything else is not going to get you where you want to be. Everything else is going to get you to a point where you have to watch movies to escape. You have to fantasize about what you want to do in life because the reality is you're not ready to change. Grace, sympathy, and compassion to you. I don't care if it's your mother, your father, or your child. As long as you're an adult and your children are adults or whatever it may be, then you change your number. You don't give it to anyone until you're ready. And you think about that because you know what? You'd be better off if your mother didn't know how to get in touch with you for a week. You'd be better off if your children didn't know how to get in touch with you for a week. If they're adults, you're adults. If you need to really refocus your life, because guess what? Your mother has had your phone number for how long? Your, your, your adult kids, your friends, everyone has had your phone number for how long? And look at where you're at now. How's that worked for you? It hasn't. You keep buying snacks and you keep them in your house and you think that's you're only going to eat them once in a while. How's that work for you? Keep the beer in your basement. You think you're going to fight that temptation? How serious are you to change? You don't have to be serious. If you don't want to change, you should be you. You shouldn't do anything based on any other reason other than you want it. But for me, for me, in my life, losing 200 pounds, cutting off unhealthy relationships, changing my life, for me, cut it out completely. You do whatever you want. And, you know, how do I how do I look at it? I said, look, when someone else loses 200 pounds, they can give me advice. When someone else has healthy relationships like I have them in my life, they can give me advice. When somebody else gets their career, when somebody else does things that I see is, you know, at a different level than me, I'll take their advice. But while they have unhealthy relationships, while they have diabetes, while they have a string of unhappiness in their life, I'm not going to take their advice. And I'm not, I may not even give them my phone. How many people have my phone number right now? Not too many people other than business. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Successful people have a small circle. Because let me tell you something. In life, you're lucky if you have a fab five. You're lucky if you have five reliable, loving people in your life that you can truly call and they can truly call you. And the, the conversation is about something. It's not about just a tingling feeling when you get a text from them because you need a high because you're lonely, but you suffer for years because it's an unfulfilling relationship that isn't bonded in an even yoke. It's bonded in unequalness. And that's how you lose your confidence. And that's how you don't go forward. I end on this and then we go right to the live comments because it's, it's very simple. Don't mind fuck the message. Excuse the language. If you want to change your life, you change your phone number and you give it to no one immediately. Then you evaluate and you see one by one who should really have your phone number. That's the only way to change your life. That's the only way to put your old life behind you so you can step into your new life. You don't step into your new life by keeping your old life with you. And you may have to change your number a couple times throughout the course of your life. That's a, that's a mind of adaptation and, and evolving. If you don't have that type of mindset, you're going to have the same number for 30 years. You're going to live the same life for 70 years. Living isn't having the same life for 70 years in a row. Not in my opinion. Do what you want.
All right, that being said, I try not to be too long-winded. I try to knock that out within 15 minutes with some of my spirit in life. And now we'll get to the live comments. Let's see what we got. Love and respect everyone out there. Hope you had a good day. And cut out so many people from my life. Toxic people, that's a key word. And now I feel so much better. Look, initially it's hurtful. The last MILF that I dated, it was hurtful. It took me two years to recover, if I'm being honest with you. The first six months, I was fiending not to text her. Fiending not to give her my number. But I knew that it was over. I knew that there's nothing there for me anymore. And I had to make a decision. Do I want to go forward or do I want to play games with my life? It's going to be two years of pain, maybe. But the only way you get through that pain is if you go forward. You don't go forward with that, with have holding on to their number and you holding on to their number. Brian, I dig this topic. Brian, love and respect. Fish M. Same with Facebook, Instagram, everything. All new. New start in life. I'm not mad at that. Change your profile as many times as you need. Change your life as many times as you need until you find your sweet spot. I'm not mad at that. Rob, what's up, Sam? Rob, love and respect. DT and professional window cleaner. What's up, man? Sam, what's up? Hope you're enjoying your day. Yeah, overall, good day. Work today. Uh, but I got outside after work. I walked around, sweated a little bit. I feel good, and I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. Uh, Brian, at Fish, that's exactly what I'm going through. Yep. Uh, again, I, I've shared this so many times. I mean, we every night we could just talk about getting rid of unhealthy relationships. You can have a great job. You can be doing great in life in many aspects of how society views it. But if, if you have unhealthy relationships, your life, your life is a disaster. Period. Period. With family members, lovers, doesn't matter. If you have unhealthy relationships, your life is a disaster. Doesn't matter if you're a millionaire. It's a disaster. We saw that. How many times we see that? Lamar Odom. Famous. Relationship. Disaster. Tristan Thomas. I mean, everybody. But you can name anyone with the Kardashians. But you know what I'm saying. Disaster, in my opinion. Jake. What's up, Jake? I have been thinking about cutting out my father. Well, if you've been thinking about it, it's already... I often... I may have sparked what was already inside you. But if, if there's something inside you, then you're going to do it. You're just needing that little spark. But it's already there for you to do. So... Obviously, your spirit, your gut, your Holy Spirit, whatever you want, it's talking to you. you Gotta listen. He only comes around something. Thanks for the inspiration. Yep. Look, I know the I know the scriptures say honor thy father, uh, but I also know that Jesus says when when his mother was looking for him, they said, "Who's my mother? Who's my father?" I tell you the truth, anybody who does the will of God is my mother and father and brother and sister. The bottom line is, look, you know, don't let people emotionally manipulate you. Whether it's church folk, whether it's your actual family members, you honor yourself first because God lives inside you and you're not going to be able to do anything great in life when you have unhealthy relationships, including your father and mother. Uh, sad, but that's the truth. Susan, Crossroads Chris. Good evening, Sam and friends. Thank you for showing up. All caps forward. Good to see you, Chris. Love and respect. Susan. Hey, Sam and company. Yes. Fish. Abrian. Trust me, it will be the best thing you do for your mental. Totally agree with that. Mental and spiritual life. Very much agree with that. Make yourself a priority, not others. You know, I agree. I remember watching the Whitney Houston funeral on TV. And that was the whole service message was priorities. When you make Bobby Brown your priority and not your own mental and physical well-being, guess what happens? Guess what happens? I mean, it's sad. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, God rest the dead. But, you know, you end up in a bathtub. And so does your daughter. Why? Because you have to prioritize your life. What's the priority of your life? Take care of yourself first, mind, body, soul. And then don't allow anyone with their toxic energy to come in your space, period. Family member, lover, I don't care if they're banging you out just right. I don't care if they've lent you money. I don't care what they did for you in your life. You don't owe anyone your soul. Never forget it. John, hey man, mad respect. John, love and respect you also. Thank you, brother. Nicholas, what's up, Nick? Hey, bro, finally caught your live stream. Nice to see you, Nick. Good to see you, man, too. Love and respect. I got a friend named Nicholas. Love and respect, man. BBT. Sound John. Sound John. Hey, Sam. Yes, yeah, so true, Sam. Stay inspired because nobody will do it for you. Oops, forward we go. Turn the page. Then palm tree emoji. Totally agree. Follow up. Everything in life you have to follow up with because no one cares about the business of your life more than you. Never forget that. Totally agree. Uh, BVT, Crossroads, hey, BVT, Brian, no time for games. Yeah, I mean, look, 
a lot of people play games in life. Uh, there's a look. There's a time to have fun. You shouldn't take life too serious. I agree with that. But when I come in intense and when I come in focused, I mean that's the mindset you have to have. And then when you when you create the environment that you need to grow healthy, then you can you know bring it down a notch, you know, and you can enjoy yourself. But when you're in a toxic environment, when you're unhealthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, you got to get a little bit pissed off to turn the tables and to get your life back on track. Uh, Yolanda. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Janice 11 o'clock for my ice cream. I'm not mad at that. Look now back in the day, did I backslide and have chocolate chip mint ice cream with a pound of chocolate sprinkles on it every night? Sure. I used to love Carvel ice cream, chocolate chip mint, uh, ice cream. Uh, but let me tell you something, when you get to a point where you can't tie your shoes, when you get to a point where you don't feel comfortable in any clothing, even when you have five X white tees and you're still uncomfortable, when you sweat just to get up, uh, and I like to sweat, uh, it's not good. When you can't walk to beach and you can't run, it's not good. So is, is the, look, I'm not saying don't have any treats in life, but I'm saying you got to cut out the shit. In my opinion, everyone should do what they want. This is my life journey I'm sharing, but I want to respect everyone has their own. Uh, it, it, you got to be healthy. In my opinion, Stefan, baba, Rolodex. I haven't heard that word in 15 years. Yep, you know what I mean. Thank you. You just dated yourself, son. That's okay. I'm old. I'm 38 years old. I got no problem with that. I just dated myself since I know the Rolodex. Ain't no, ain't nothing wrong with that. Look, to me, I'm not trying to sex anyone out. And look, for, if I'm being honest with you, as a man, as you get older, your stock goes up. Uh, females maybe the other way around. Look, why? Because uh, you know, women tend to mature faster than men. So now, like women like the old guy with the gray beard, uh, with a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of humor, and he's more mature than the young guys. Uh, you know, so is it a win for me? It's a win for me. Uh, you know, I'm very thankful for that. Stacy Kelly, what up, my mom? Uh, what about my mom though? Uh, anyone? Uh, if you have to ask me what up about your mom, cut her off. Because if you're even asking me about that, that shows me that there's a seed inside you that isn't sitting right, and you have to uproot that, uproot that unhealthy relationship. Uh, now, if you love your mom and you think it's healthy, you should do you. Uh, you should make your own decisions, take accountability for them. But th this is my experience. Uh, I haven't blocked out my mom, only my father. Uh, but if my mom was unhealthy, would I block her? I'd, I'd block anyone. Okay? Uh, that's my opinion. Gino, hey, how, you, how do you break up with someone and not feel bad about breaking their heart? I've been with her for three years. There's no way around it. Uh, you just basically say, look. Uh, I am not at the same, I'm not on the same page as you anymore. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be hurtful. It's going to take two to three years for, uh, everyone to fully heal. But the longer you put it off, the longer it's going to linger. Uh, because if, if you even have to ask that question, you're, you're unhappy, you're resentful and she will wake up the same way. I mean, so just let it bleed, heal and, uh, just be respectful, but be honest. Honesty is the best policy for the most part. Uh, that's how I look at it, Gino. Good luck with that brother. AJ. Hand wave emoji. Janice, hey, Stephen. Janice, I have had my landline since 1987. Janice, no, nah, I'm not mad at you. I do not believe in landlines. I do not believe in cable TV. Uh, you should be able to do everything on your phone with an unlimited data plan. Uh, that's my opinion. But what should you do? Whatever you want. Stephen, haha. Layla, thanks for supporting my channel. You're the bomb. Stefan, I check, uh, we're going to check it out too. I haven't checked it out. Did I check Stefan's out? I checked a couple of viewers out last night. I don't know if I checked Stefan's out. I'll check it out. Neil, hey, Sam, you're truly blessed if you have one person in your life who loves you for you. Huh, I totally agree with that. Forward, Sam, always all caps forward, triple exclamation mark. I totally agree with Neil on that. I had a friend that his mother used to always say the same thing. She used to say, if you have a, if you have, if you can count your friends on one hand, you'd have a lot. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the bottom line is you'd be lucky if you have one, two, three friends that are really true. Lucky. Um, uh, totally agree with that. Nicholas, what do you think about Trump and North Korea summit meeting? Uh, well, hopefully it goes good. Uh, look, I mean, it's gotten farther than it's gotten for decades. So that's a positive, in my opinion. Uh, do I think that North Korea can be misleading and we can be misleading. Sure. It could be all a game. I don't know. Uh, there's no way to tell for sure, but it seems like a step forward. Time will tell. Um, at the end of the day, this is how I view North Korea. North Korea is nothing but a buffer zone for China. Uh, it's all about strategic location. China, North Korea is like the size of one of our smaller states in America, basically. So China, the China will push 
North Korea to come to the table with us, but China has a vested interest in having North Korea as a buffer on their border, just like we have a vested interest in, you know, having somewhat allies on our border. So China's not going to allow North Korea to, you know, be united with South Korea and us be allies with them and on their border. So they'll play the game. This is all part of the dance. But this is, you know, and you can't blame China. Look, they got to do them. We got to do us. And the bottom line is, am I worried about uh, North Korea nuclear missiles? No, I mean, they could barely get them in the sky. I mean, Pakistan has nuclear uh, weapons. You should be more worried about Pakistan having nuclear weapons than um, North Korea. Uh, you know, so it's like, you know, Ben Laden was in Pakistan. That's where we got him. Do we, you know, but why don't we care about Pakistan? Because, you know, we have, we have our own vetted interest in there. This is all a little bit of a show. At the end of the day, what is the only country in the world that's ever used nuclear weapons? America. America is the only country in the world that's ever actually really deployed nuclear weapons on a mass scale. So we're a little bit of hypocrites too to say that no other country can have them and we're the only country that used them. So, but that's all part of being the top dog. Uh, that's my overall thoughts on that subject in general. Uh, I hope I say this night name right. Uh, OT Butter says, uh, who's hyped for the summer? Nicholas, nice to see you live, bro. Always good to see you, Nick. Brian, out with the old and with the new. Totally agree. Even a drop of the old will spoil the new path. Brian, Brian, that's a great statement. I remember in the scriptures, it says something like that. Like, even if you put, like, if you put old wine in new, in new, uh, like, skins, they used to, like, house the wine and, and like, animals. Like, if you do that, you spoil the whole wine. Like, you can't mix the old with the new. You can't take your old life into your new life. How do you get a new life? By changing your phone number completely. So that no one can text you from your old life. No one can reach out to you. And that's it. Uh, are you ready for that? Only you can answer that. Nicholas, Trump denuclearizing North Korea. Nicholas, do you care about that? Answer that. Thank you for the question. Eddie Imperial, where's the beer? I don't drink beer anymore, but I drink it. I drank it when I was younger. I don't do. Uh, I don't drink alcohol. I used to smoke cigarettes too. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't do drugs. I'm not mad at anyone that that's what they want to do because I did it for years, but I don't do any of that anymore. Uh, Eddie, sweat is good. I totally agree with that. That's why I live in Florida. Love that, Chris. My neighbor has asked to borrow my phone twice this week. Oh, the second time I asked what was wrong with his phone. He said he was to pay a service charge to keep his old number from an unpaid bill. Yeah, it's time for you to move, brother. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> that's enough for me to make me move, but I love you, Chris. Ah, uh, Albrea, what's up, Albrea? Glam Gypsy in the house. ATL, my phone went out last week. I went to the Apple store. The guy says I can restore the old info. I said, great. Thank you for the time. Thank you, time. Thank you, time for a new season. Yep. Keep that number new, and that's it. You know, forget saving text. Forget taking screenshots. Look, forget all that shit. You should erase your pictures and your text on a weekly basis. Every week, you know, you should clean slate. Uh, why do people not go forward in life? They still hold on to text from two years ago. Look, that shit is over. You got to go forward. Uh, it's up to you though. It's your life, your decision. It's my opinion, my life, my experience. Uh, Brian, she's crossroads, Chris. I told him not to ask to borrow my phone again. Oh yeah. Something suspect with that. That's like somebody that tells you like a, um, 15 minute story and you know how the story ends. Can I borrow $5? Uh, been down that road. No good. Nicholas R N. I have a house, but I am thinking of renting it out and then getting an RV. Well, total disaster being a landlord, unless you have a full passion for being a landlord. A landlord is, is being another job. So if you want to rent out your house, you're basically saying, I want a job. And I like being a landlord. Uh, there's, uh, my mom owned a multifamily property. She still does. Uh, in my opinion, that was part of the reason my parents got divorced. It's a lot of stress, a lot of aggravation. Uh, and I wouldn't do it. Uh, for me, in my opinion, do what you want. Part of RV lifestyle is living a, the most carefree life as possible. For me, when you're a landlord, you're not carefree. You're anchored down, you're mentally burdened, and you're going to have aggravation. And in my opinion, in my experience, ain't worth it. San Diego. Yep, Sam. San Diego. Hotbed of nomads. Yep. Cars, vans, beach, they're all over. It's great. Yep. So is it in Florida. Why is it so prevalent in those areas? Because of the climate. The outdoor uh, environment conditions with regards to temperature and just environment allows people to basically live, live outdoors. 
Uh, you know, that's why there's very little in the Northeast uh, growing up in Jersey. I know that I wasn't exposed to that culture uh, as far as like nomads or camping out. Why? Because it's only seasonal in the Northeast. And that's the reason because the out and I, I spent two winters uh, in my car and I can tell you, I, I call it severe colds horrible. Uh, it's better to sleep in the heat than, than a freezing cold. I was in zero below cold winter. It was horrible this winter. Cam, 816. I'm inspired. Cam, love and respect. Liz, I never let anyone use my phone. No, I'm, not, I'm not mad at that. I'm sorry if I'm selfish. You're not wrong. But I work for mine and no one helped me. So my phone and my car gets never exchanged hands. Well, amen, Liz. And I don't care if someone helped you. I don't care if someone lent you money. I don't care if someone got you a job. You owe no one your soul. You owe no one your soul. I have seen blind loyalty cause a friend of mine to give her life and her children's life to a guy that just because she took the rap for him, she thought she owed him her soul. She doesn't owe him her soul. And the truth is, the reason she got in shit was because she was following him. That's the bottom line. So, you know, look, you got to get rid of that blind loyalty shit and you got to be loyal to yourself. Why? Because that's a priority for healthy living. And anyone who doesn't agree with that is not a healthy for you. In my opinion, that's not selfish. That's just right living. Susan, very careful who I give my number to. With caller ID, I can filter who I want to talk to. It's the junk calls I hate. Well, I totally understand that, Susan. Eddie. God wants us to leave our father and mother anyway to grow up. I totally agree with that. Look, after a certain point in life, you have to be an adult. Uh, now, certainly, and most parents, they're not destitute, especially in America. Situations is when kids and parents live with each other past adulthood. Even when they're seniors, a lot of times you're better off with a full-time caretaker. That's what I've seen disasters happen, unhealthy environments happen when people live in the same house. They shouldn't be. Uh, this is my actual life experience. Susan, don't recognize that number. Don't answer. I ain't mad at that, Susan. Jason, what's up, Jason? Hey, partner. You cannot find happiness in another unless they like themselves first. Amen, Jason. I totally agree with that. Look, if someone's not happy with themselves, you're going to be able to tell and you're not going to vibe and they're going to emotionally manipulate you. If someone's unhappy with their life, what are they going to do? They're going to try to break you. Why are they going to try to break you? Because they're broken. They don't know any better. So misery loves company. Sometimes uh, the, the game is just to seduce you into their misery. You're thinking you're there to try to help them. They don't want help. They, you know, they, no, no one can help them. They have to help themselves. That's the truth. Uh, that's what I've seen. Solomon, what's up? Enjoy the message. Solomon, peace emoji back to you. Thank you. Eddie, that's me. Ha ha. Sam John, getting closer here, Sam. Check out a marina in Vero Beach today. I like Vero Beach. When you go to Vero Beach, they have a they have a park there, a beautiful park with a museum and a harbor. Uh, Vero Beach, nice area for boating. What's my favorite area that I, I may consider buying a a, a home basin? Uh, uh, Juno Beach. Uh, now Juno Beach is not necessarily heavy for boating, but right above that, right north of that Jupiter Beach, that's uh, Jupiter. That's the, probably a, a beautiful, it's a beautiful area for boating. Uh, but for me, uh, I, as I've been looking, Juno Beach may be the place I, this bird eventually has a home base. We'll see. Uh, as we go on, we'll, we'll, I'll keep you updated. Uh, keep me updated, Sailing John, on your travels uh, because I was just, you know, we'll, we'll hook up. Sailing John, me, you, Milano, Cuban girls, that's still a go. We're going to make that happen. Um, Eddie. So do women, uh, so do women daughters love the old man's pocket wallet? Well, yeah, they might like some sugar daddies, but I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I know who that is. I'm not going after that game. What I, well, no, I don't go after anything, but sometimes like what I vibe with is mature women that have been through enough in life and they want, look, they just want to have fun. Their kids are, em they're empty nesters. They're still you know looking good out there. And that's it. But do I even do that anymore? I mean, not really. What do I really do? People ask me all the time, Sam, what do you do for a relationship? Well, one is I don't want a relationship. What do I do for, to fulfill my sexual needs? I masturbate and that's it. Do once in a while I see a girl and we flirt and, and re yeah, but do I exchange my phone number? No. Why? Because I know where that leads. I've been down that road. I've had frivolous sex and I've had meaningless, I had meaningful relationships. They all end in a disaster. I don't want that. Even if they end good, I don't want the work. 
even if they end good, I don't want the work. I know myself, okay? So I don't give my phone number to anyone. Why? I don't want the work. If you want a relationship, you're saying you want work. If you want to rent out your house, you're saying you want to be a landlord. You want work. I don't want work. I want minimal, minimal aggravation in my life, maximum freedom. For some people, they can't handle just masturbating. They need to have an unhealthy relationship. Uh, I'll pass. No, thank you. Um, Liz, I said on John. Wish I could have gone with you. Chris, Sound John, Vero Beach is very nice. Happy for you, brother. Yep, I like that area. Ariane, hey, Ariane. Hand wave more. Where's uh, my turn? I hope she's not mad at me because I uh, was a little bit upset that she had a shooting gun emoji uh, profile picture. It wasn't mad because I'm against guns. Uh, I got no I, lo I got no problem with guns. I believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I was just mad at, you know, that's a red flag for me. Anytime I see a girl with a profile picture with her at a shooting range or shooting a gun, it's a red flag for me personally. But I don't want to date anybody, so do whatever you want. You married guys should nail up the back door uh, before going outside. We don't want any trouble. Any, that's true. Hello, Sammy. Hey, Jade. I love respect to another uh, West Coast viewer and everyone from California. We got love for California. Eddie, women use their nuclear weapon every day. Well, I totally agree with that. Look, but so, yo, men play, look, it takes two to tango. I thank God for women in my life at any perspective. If I just knew men all my life, oh, it'd be miserable. I'm not, I'm not a men going your own way guy. I respect women. Uh, I believe in the of women and I love women. I, I just don't want to date them. Uh, and I don't want a lot of friends. That's how I am. Some people understand that. Some people don't. Uh, but I got love and respect for everyone. Um, uh, Barata. I hope I said that night, name right. Love and respect to you, Barat. Apologies if you already covered this, but curious to know where do you take showers? No problem. I take showers at the gym. Uh, so I have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week gym membership at Planet Fitness, and that's where I take showers. Love and respect to you. Uh, uh, forgive me if I'm saying your name wrong. I'm not good with names, but Barat, love and respect. May West, hey May West, love and respect to Brooklyn. Hey May, good to see you. Yolanda, use and then all caps every bit of those two to three years to heal. Oh, totally agree with that. Get to know, agree, without distractions. Totally agree and grow, agree. For real, for real, <laughs> agree, agree, and never look back. All caps, period. Somebody give Yolanda the fire emoji. Yolanda just summed it up. Good job, Yolanda. Eddie, howdy, Sam, love and respect. Angie Grace. Life is a risk or it's nothing at all. Well, I agree with risk. I agree with calculated risk and you should only risk what you want. So if you want something, risk for it. But if you don't want it, don't risk it just because you're lonely. Only risk it because you want it. You're willing to deal with it. You're willing to take accountability. With it. I'm not willing to risk my happiness to be in a relationship because I don't want a relationship. I'm willing to risk other things because I like other things, you know, uh, so I'm not against risk, but you have to know what you want. I don't want a relationship, so why risk something for it? I don't want it. Uh, you know what I mean? And all I want is uh, to be fulfilled physically. Uh, what do I do to do that? I, I, I'm respectful. I don't string people along. I masturbate, and that's it. That's healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't do anything in public or anything like that, so there's nothing wrong with that. Crossroads Chris, don't rent to friends or family. Puh, don't rent to anybody, but especially friends and family. Totally agree. Eddie, the government, all caps, wants to stop RV life elites want to move money. Well, that may be a, the case somewhat, but at the, at the end of the day, the reality is less than 1% of society will live in their RV car or van. Why? Because most people are going to want a family and they're going to want to be in a relationship. If you think you're going to have a family and relationship and you're both going to agree to live full-time on the road, there's very few people in life that are do that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there, there's very few. So if there's 325 million people in the United States of America, then there's less than 3 million, less than 1% who live full time on the road in an RV car van. So, you know, surely government cares about that, but I don't think they care about it to the extent because it's, it's a very small percentage of society. So, you know, you may, you have to move a lot to comply with the law, which I do, uh, but, and, and they tax you in other ways, right? So being that I'm constantly moving, my taxes, I pay more in gas. I, I pay more when I go to stores in the economy that I'm visiting. That's my tax. Uh, but I'm willing to pay that because I can keep the lifestyle I want. So, you know, you spend your money either way. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with tax. It's all about proportion uh, and doing what you want in life. Born, the Roman Empire took a census. Why? Because they heard that somebody, a new king was being born and they wanted to maintain control and contain control. Uh, con continue order in society. I'm not mad at governments wanting a level of order. You can't have just mass chaos. I'm not for anarchy. I'm not for anarchy. 
So I, I believe in governments, but I also believe in a private sector. The debate is always the balance, but I'm not anti-government. Uh, I'm not big government, anti-government. To me, I'm a middle guy. I understand both. I understand the need for government, but government can overreach. So I'm a balanced guy in that area. Uh, Eddie, haha, misery loves company. Oh, you could tattoo that and you would never regret it. Uh, Elon, Elon Leon. What's up, Sam? Love and respect. Angie Grace, Jupiter Island is sweet. Yep, Burt Reynolds lives there. Uh, you know that guy uh, from uh, Weekend at Bernie's when he was dead, but they propped him up? Uh, magical police. Eddie, night, there was also to crack down on Walmart RV parking overnight. Look, why? Because some people abuse it. Why, why are there certain laws on the West Coast? Because certain people abuse parking on the street. Uh, so it's understandable in some extent. Liz, laugh my ass off. I don't know why, but I'm amused when you talk about self-pleasure. I need it. Uh, yeah, it's understandable. Look, just like when in school, like, you know, you say the word penis or vagina and everyone laughs. That's okay. But it's a part of, you know, human nature. I mean, who are the people that laugh at you when you say you masturbate? The people that have period stain underwears, uh, they're girls, and the guys have uh, yellow urine stains on the front of their drawers. They laugh at you, uh, but here they are. They have bodily functions all over their garments, and they laugh at you because you masturbate. And if you think Creflo Dollar, if you think Joel Alstein, if you think those guys don't masturbate, look, who masturbates the most? People who are married. People who are married. Believe me, I know a lot of people that are married, and what do you think they're doing? Masturbating, okay? There's a reason their socks are sticky. And uh, it ain't a uh, Hello Kitty glue. It's, uh, you know, old cum. Now, some people get upset when I say that, but that's the truth. Yolanda, know thyself. Yes. Nicholas, what up, brother? Hey, love and respect to the UK. And Tarana Canada. Got love and respect for Canada as well. Really appreciate the content. And I appreciate that encouragement. Thank you. You're giving out. Thank you. Only question I have is, did you not consider the Honda Element? It has a camper on the roof. God bless. Thank you for the question. I don't like the Honda Element. The look of it doesn't inspire me, and I don't like the pop-up camper. Uh, I don't even like the guy, God bless him, no disrespect, who has the uh, Van Element uh, show thing. No disrespect. Just my opinion. Um, it just doesn't do it for me. But to backtrack, when I bought my Jeep Renegade uh, a, a year before I started living in it, I owned my own condo for 15 years. So when I started my journey of downsizing, I didn't have any plans to live in, in a car or RV. My plan was to sell my bigger condo that's like in a suburb outside New York City, or that was, and to downsize to a beach condo that would cut my living expenses in half. But I knew that I wanted to move to Florida, so I was looking at the Jersey Shore, but I couldn't find something I really liked at the Jersey Shore, and I knew I wanted to go to Florida long term. So I said, why am I going to buy another house in Jersey when I know I want to go to Florida? And so the only thing I was waiting for was to get a, to try to find a job within my own company for a remote transfer that I can work remotely. I work in the technology industry. So that took me two years to get. Uh, so eventually once I got it this year, um, uh, well, well, so during that period, I said, well, I want to sell my house because to buy another house, the only leverage you have is to be able to move on a new one right away. So I said, well, I'll just look at my house. And then when I put my house on the market, it sold in about two and a half months. I couldn't find, or I, I wasn't ready to buy again, basically, uh, because of that reason. I wanted to move to Florida. So a friend of mine actually at work said, Sam, you should look into RVs. I said, what do you mean RVs? I said, uh, because I, again, I was really never exposed to the RV culture. I was brought up in a, in a suburb, uh, you know, in New Jersey and really wasn't much RVing at all. Uh, so, uh, so I looked into RVs and I almost bought a tab trailer because I could almost tow that with my Jeep Renegade. But then I looked at all the downsides of towing something, all the extra aggravation. I like simplicity. So when I was looking on YouTube, they started recommended other videos relating to downsizing in RV life. And then eventually, like I went to like the channels where they had people living in their vans and in their cars. And I said, man, I'm young. I'm in shape. I could do that. Uh, and even if I can't, what I want to do is let me sell my house. Let me get to closing. And I'm in a time window. Let me try it for a couple months. If it doesn't work, you know, I'll just go either buy another place or I rent or I do whatever. I, I'm in, I'm, I have no kids. I have nobody depending on me. I can do whatever I want. So why, why should I do, you know, I, I have this opportunity in my life. So once I sold my house, I, I started living in my Jeep. I figured I'd give it a shot. And after the first couple months were rough. After I got about four months in, I started to get a routine. I said, this is no problem. And uh, then when I got to eight, nine months, I said, oh, this changed my life. 
Now, will I ever buy another piece of property? I may, uh, but it's go it's going to be in Florida where I'm a resident now. It's going to be at a smaller scale, and it may just be a plot of land or RV lot. With like, I'll put an RV or a small little mobile home as a home base. But right now, my job is remote. I mean, I travel for it, and uh, I haven't decided yet because I'm very leery. It's still a commitment that I'm not ready to commit to. Uh, but that kind of documents my journey a little bit. Good question. Excuse me. Uh, Cyber Cheese. Planet Fitness is amazing. Totally agree. For that, I got a $10 a month plan thing for that. Yes, now there's two different plans in Planet Fitness. There's the silver card and the black card. I have the black card. I pay $21.37 per month. It gets automatically deducted from my checking account. That's how you have to do it. They deduct it out of your checking. The silver card, which it sounds like Cyber Chris has, Cyber Cheese, that's that card, that membership is only good for going to one, from my understanding, you correct me if I'm wrong, it's only good for going to one particular Planet Fitness over and over again. So for me, I, I travel nationally. So I need to be able, that's why I got the black card. I need to be able to go to any other Planet Fitness at any time, even though I have a home Planet Fitness. And I use that. I travel all up and down, mainly the East Coast of America. Uh, over the past year, that's what I've done. So, uh, but, I, but either way, for $21.37, I have a hot shower every day. I have state-of-the-art bathrooms. I never have to clean a bathroom. I never have to worry about a water heater. I never have to worry about a leak. And I have a variety to choose from at any time. Uh, I love it. Uh, it changed my life. And I get a workout in. I already want to work out. So like that also plays to what I want to do in life. I want to be healthy. I want to be active. And I want to have an incentive to go to the gym for various reasons. So wh why I'm taking a shower, where I'm shaving, whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to get a workout in. Why? Because that's the lifestyle I'm in now. It's like sometimes people don't go to the gym when they have a house, which I've had for many years, because it's out of the way. Uh, but now the gym is in my way because that's part of my daily routine. So it, it all cycles into this healthy lifestyle that I like. Some people may not. D light. I saw some of your comments. Thank you. Doesn't the last big storm in Florida scare you to buy real estate in Florida? No. You want to know why D light? Because I had friends that lost their house in Hurricane Sandy in New Jersey a couple years ago. New Jersey, Hurricane Sandy was worse than any hurricane Florida's had in over 20 years. Okay. So I actually had a guy that I work with. He lives in New Jersey. He bought a house. He wants to move to Florida. He wants to move to Key West. He had a house in the Jersey Shore. He lost it completely in Hurricane Sandy. And that took that put him behind going to Florida another five years because he had to totally rebuild his house. The lesson is you should live wherever you want to live and deal with the elements. I don't want to deal with nor'easter storms. I don't want to deal with hurricanes. I mean, if I deal with hurricanes, then I want to deal with them in a place I want to live. I don't want to. And there's no place you can live on this planet that doesn't have adverse weather. It's all a matter of what are you willing to deal with? I you know, you can say, well, I'm not going to move to California. You have earthquakes. I'm not going to move to the middle of the West, Midwest, because they have uh, tornadoes. I'm not going to move Northeast because they have snowstorms or they have Hurricane Sandy where you lost your house. So this is my and, and uh, when I buy a home uh, again, it's going to be either a piece of property that all is going to be a raw land or just like an RV lot with an RV that you can move when a hurricane comes or you could just put like a little mobile home that's, you know, 10,000 or whatever dollars that thing blows away got insurance is no big deal so living light and living mobile gives you that flexibility where if a storm is coming all you have to do is move your rv or if you have just a piece of property it's not a big deal so that all plays into my thinking and i thought about that liz a lot of fire emojis and thumbs nicholas i have a big rv who parks in front house one time a week i never bother them and i don't mind them being there well i would i would mind i would if I own my house, that I if I had my condo for 38 years and I lived in a gated community, uh, I would be pissed. I don't park on residential sleeps. Uh, I don't park on residential streets and spend the night and sleep in my car in front of houses. I think that's wrong, and I think that's why they pass certain laws to prohibit that. Look, you should go to a campground. You should go to a rest area. You should go to a truck stop. You should go to a Walmart. In my opinion, I don't do it. You should not be parking in on residential streets and sleeping in your car, van, or RV. I mean, unless it's an exception one night, but this doesn't sound like an exception. This sounds like a guy or a girl who's abusing the system and is being disrespectful, in my opinion. Cyber cheese. I would suggest getting a ceramic tint. 
made life much easier. Good investment. Well, my back windows, I know you can't tell because it looks like the light's coming in. My back windows and my side back windows, they're all tinted out. My front ones aren't. Um, but I may do my front ones eventually. Uh, but either way, I do have window covers I put on at night. Uh, but good suggestion. Angie Grace. I don't disagree. I've been single for 25 years. Laugh out loud. <laughs> it's a win. Uh, it's a win for me. Bob the Builder. Do you remember Lacey Rocks? Yes, I do. The fake girl that tried to catfish you. She didn't really try to catfish me, but I understand what she is. His name is David something from Iowa. That's okay. I left a link to his channel on a previous video. Uh, yeah, I'm not into that. Look, I understand. Look, some people have mental issues. Some people just play games in life. I'm not into revenge. I'm not into laughing at people. I'm not into hurting people. The bottom line is, look, I'm, I've had several people on this meeting up with anyone. I don't want to meet up with anyone. All I want to do is watch porn, live my life, live off my investments and not be bothered. So I don't care, like, in Miami, we'll have some Cuban coffee, but that's it. I'm not meeting up with anyone else. Uh, Eddie, the Bible says to rightfully dis, uh, divide the word. You know, the, the Bible says to test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Let go of what is false. Totally agree. Angie, oh, socks. Smart. That fell out. Liz, I'm not laughing at you, Sam. That's okay. Uh, just that you open and you're honest about it. I'm not, look, believe me. Uh, I'm not, even if somebody was laughing at me, I'm fine with that. Why? Cause you don't lose 200 pounds and walk outside without people laughing at you. Uh, you don't do a YouTube channel if you're not willing to have people laugh at you. You cannot be yourself if you are unwilling to have people laugh at you. Do I care? No. Why? Because I'm in a good place and I'm going forward. I love you, Liz. I know what you mean. Janice, I saw two leopard clothed women this week. Huh. Well, uh, you probably, uh, also saw disaster behind them. Love to you. Earth. Hello from France. Love and respect to France. Hey, France. Good to see you, Earth. Liz, my kids got used condoms to avoid the sticky clothes. Bed sheets issues. Well, I'm not mad at that. Uh, Pee Weave, what kind of work do you do from a car? Well, I don't. Uh, well, it depends. Well, one is I have to have the internet. I'm in, uh, I'm in electrical engineering and capacity management for an IT firm. So there are some days I go to the office. But if... I have internet access and I don't need to go on site for an audit or something. I can do everything remotely. What can I do from remotely from a car? I can do engineering. I can do drawings. I can do calculations and I can propose different paperwork that needs to get proposed for my job. So that's how I work remotely. All I need is internet access. There's many people that work in the technology field and many other fields, even sales, that they all work remotely. I know a lot of sales guys that they work remotely. They only go on site if they have to entertain a client or do something like that. So that's what I do. Good look. Good look, honky. Nomad, you remind me of that Grand Theft Auto character. All right. Uh, I don't know who that one is. And whatever. I, I, I know you ain't about the stress of a relationship. Not at all. But I want a family. I'm not mad at that. And not into BS. Okay. Is there hope? Yes. What type of shit test should I give the potential female? All right. Well, here you go. Top three. If she has leopard clothing, never marry her. If she has a Hello Kitty accessory, never marry her. If she has an Instagram picture where her at a shooting range or her shooting a gun, never marry her. If she passes those three tests in addition to the Bronx tail test where she opens up your door uh, when she's in the car before you, then maybe, maybe you got a shot. But it's still 50-50 because that's the percentage failure rate in marriages. 50-50. Should you go for it? Yes. Is there hope? Yes. Is there a lot of risk? Yes. But there's nothing wrong with risk if that's something you want. Good question. Ricardo, what up, Sam? My interview is tomorrow. I will pray for you, brother. Hope I get the job. Need the money badly. I will pray for you, and I appreciate and respect that you came in here repeatedly, and you didn't give up, even when I was a little bit rough. Ricardo, I love you. I'll pray for you, and I want the best for you. Susan, Sam, can I ask what season did you go nomadic, and why was it so difficult? Uh, well, I sold my house in February. I went nomadic in the middle of the winter in New Jersey. Uh, uh, that was difficult, and... No matter what, when all you've done is own a house for all your life and live in a house and you go to living in a car, that's shocking. Oh, that's why it was so difficult. Breezy. Best car for boondocking is Toyota Prius. Somewhat. Um, Planet Fitness and LA Fitness is best for Florida travelers. LA, Flit LA Fitness is overhyped. I've been there. They don't have as many gyms and locations. Uh, and LA Fitness bathrooms stink. Uh, Planet Fitness is better. I tried both, and eventually I chose Planet Fitness. Breezy, cheap land parcel, uh, point, uh, one acre in Crawfield, Florida. Yeah, but it's in the middle of nowhere. Crawfield, Florida is not where I want to be. So everything is priced accordingly. 
So you can get land cheap in the middle of nowhere where you don't want to be, but I don't want to live there. I want to live uh, in certain areas. Now, that's just my view. But yeah, I mean, you can buy dirt cheap, cheap land anywhere. Uh, but the question is, where do you want to live? Uh, so to me, it's not about just living cheap. I'm living below my means, whether I buy a house or whether I didn't. Uh, so if I'm living below my means, I'm not going to move to an area that doesn't inspire me just because it's cheaper. But I appreciate the suggestion. Cyber cheese. Yeah, I have to go out to that particular plan of fitness for the $10 plan. I'm tempted to go back to the black card, though. I'm always in the area because I have a storage box. Well, one is I think storage units are Satan's uh, storage bed. I think storage units cause mental, uh, mental harm for most people. Uh, because it's just stuff that you're never going to use. In my opinion, that's my life experience with my family members. Storage units, disaster. But... Uh, it all depends on your lifestyle. If you didn't use uh, a variety of different gyms, then you don't need one. But you know your life better than me. Cyber cheese. Also, you can get tint that will probably cost you about 500 bucks. But you can see easy at night. Uh, I hear that. Cyber cheese. It acts as sort of a one-way mirror. Limos use it. Yeah, but I, that, it doesn't matter to me because even when you have dark tint, you can still see street lamps and you really need those dark window covers to totally cut off all light exposure. Because even with dark limo tint, you still get light exposure. You still get that light in, even if they can't see in. And that's why you really got to have dark window covers. And that's why the tint doesn't, isn't, isn't that big for me. Eddie, new reply on March 9th, 1933. Send a document. Yeah, I read that comment on other thing. Basically saying, I don't want to read the whole thing, uh, but I've read the whole thing. Everyone should read his comment. I've read it on a different video he commented on today. The bottom line is government's always going to own a parcel of your land. They're always going to have a tax on it. They're always going to have a lien on it. Property tax is basically a lien on your land. Uh, and that's true. Uh, so, uh, but that's, look, but we pay a price to live in a great country. So there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, it's just, if it gets abused. Because there's nothing wrong with paying taxes to live in a great country that gives us a great opportunity that provides infrastructure and that, you know, is an environment where you can succeed in life. So I'm not against taxes. Uh, but again, it, those taxes can get abused and misspent. That's where you have to have balance. Cyber cheese. It is only a few years old, this tint tech. Okay, I'll check into that. Uh, PB Wave. What's the best sleeping arrangement you figured out? The back seat's completely down. The front seat completely down. Three layers. A yoga mat, a, a mattress top firmer, a mattress topper, and a bunch of quilts. That's my uh, sleeping arrangement. Uh, Eddie. Bangkok hookers are much cheaper than marriage. Uh, yeah, but uh, still a disaster. Uh, I, you know, look, I've been part, when I was down in Miami Beach for a friend's um, bachelor party back in the day. They, you know, they brought hookers back to the place. It's all a disaster. Look, the bottom line is, you want me to be honest with you? When you when you masturbate, you orgasm. When you have sex with a prostitute, you orgasm. So the experience may be a little bit different, but the net result is you orgasm so why would you get involved with something you can get arrested for even if it's legal in another country it's just you know you could be part of like human trafficking you know and everything else i'm not for that the bottom line is if you need to get your rocks off just masturbate if not there's a price to pay uh it's it's your call but this is my experience and i wouldn't do that to those bangkok cookers you know what i'm saying that's not me ricardo thanks sam palm tree and muscle emoji i love you and ricardo you prove to me you have what it takes you're gonna get blessed Crossroads, Chris. I hate to sound jaded, but there is no upside to marriage. Well, I understand that too. Cyber cheese. Thank you for sharing, Chris. I dumped a girl recently because she failed the Goodfellas door test. Well, there you go. And that was actually the Bronx uh, tail test. Not Goodfellas. Bronx tail. Uh, Nicholas. Appreciate all the answers, brother. Thank you, Nicholas. Definitely listening to all the wisdom you share. Nicholas, I appreciate your encouragement. I am listening to all the positive comments you share. Thank you. Cyber cheese. She brought up the possibility of breaking up, and I gave her no resistance. Well, that was smart. Now you have to change your number and never give it to her again. Will you do that? Only you know, and that's how it will determine your success. Crossroads Chris, Cyber Cheese, the door test rocks. Angie, holy F, you are so right about storage units effect on mental health. Huh? Well, I'm not, this isn't my theory. This isn't the Big Bang Theory. This is the inspirational nomad life experience theory. I know family members that have storage units, and their mental health is a wreck. They're popping pills every night. Life is a disaster. And they got a storage unit full of shit 45 minutes away that they never use. And the shit is still in boxes. Disaster. Rick Chan. Have you spent time boondocking at casinos in Florida or Jersey? No, I haven't. But I visited uh, the casinos in Jersey. Uh, not much anymore. Uh, but no, I have not done that. Delilah. Hey, Delilah. M. Love and respect. 
BR in the house. Am, what's going on? Low Sam and all. Catching the tail end of the feed, but it's all good. Am, love you and miss you. Eddie, there's two types of ownership. A uh, futile and, I'm not going to say that right, I apologize, Adadol. Okay, well, I'm not uh, informed on them enough to comment, but Eddie, I appreciate your research and thank you for adding information to this channel. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. I'm just going to say wave, P-Wave, P-Wave. What are the different places you park at, sleep at? Uh, truck stops, Walmarts, campgrounds. Those are my top three. Once in a while, if I'm by a friend, family member, I may crash at their driveway for one or two nights on an off time. But the, my three main go-tos are truck stops, Walmarts, and uh, campgrounds. Once in a while, Lowe's or Home Depot, same thing as a Walmart. Those are my top three. San Diego. Thanks, Sam. Great stuff. San Diego, love and respect. Cyber cheese. Damn. When you were talking about tiny... Uh, Tint, my internet hotspot started buffering, sorry, like crazy. I hope you will upload this vid. I discovered you only a few days ago. Cyber cheese. I got you, brother. Thank you. Delilah, laugh aloud. Guys, girls, you guys you guys did good tonight, and I appreciate that. I hope the uh, video came in a little bit clearer. It all depends where I'm parked, but thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you. You guys have encouraged me and a lot of positive, good feedback on this channel, and thank you, Rick. I see you. And I sincerely mean that. There's no game here. I'm not selling merchandise. I'm not doing a Patreon account. I'm not doing any of that. For me, I have a full-time job. Pays all my bills. For me, and I'm doing good. Uh, that, right, that, all right. For me, this allows me to share my gift. Also, it helps you to build your life. What should you do with your extra money? Pay down your debt. Save and live your life. Don't give it to anyone else. And if when you're ready to change your life, change your number. And don't give it to anyone immediately. Only the select few that you know should be in your life. It's very hard. I have a lot of compassion when I say that. But through my own life experience, that's what it takes. Love, respect, and peace to everyone. Thank you. 